What happens when four men refuse to stop their friend from being healed, even if they have to carry him and let him down through the roof? Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to find out what happens. Our title of this lesson is Faith of the Persistent. Let's see what those guys did. There are notes for this lesson. I'll leave a link in the description below and in the comment section. Click the link, get your notes, your Sunday school books, and your Bibles. For the International Standard Sunday School is now in session. Join me. Let's go. Teaching the Word of God in the spirit of excellence. Join Elder Rodney Jones with our Sunday school lesson. Building and equipping the children of God. Grab your Bibles, grab your notes. Get your lessons and get ready. Now let's go. Sunday school is now in session. <laughs> yes, it is, grandson. Little Jonathan Jones, Sunday school is now in session. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sunday school lesson as taught by Pastor Rodney Jones. I'm the pastor of the New Nation Anointed Ministries Church of God in Christ. We're located 1700 West 87th Street in the city of Chicago. And our zip code is 60620. Do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your first time, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'd like to welcome you to this channel and thank you for even taking the time to study with us and welcome to Sunday School. Not only that, make sure that you like, like and subscribe. Click that bell right there, notification and subscribe to this channel. It is a free subscription and the purpose of the subscribing is so that YouTube will notify you each week. Bing! Brother Jones just uploaded another lesson. On today, we're dealing with faith of the persistent. The persistent. We're in Luke's Gospel, the fifth chapter, verses 17 through 26, and this is the international lesson. What do you do when you are sick and or your friend is sick and you are in need of healing? But for some reason, you're not able to get to Dr. Jesus. You get four friends who are persistent, who refuse to allow any and everything to keep them from placing you in the lap of Jesus. This is first Sunday, and let's get to our lesson. Father, we thank you for this lesson, for this opportunity, and for this moment. Be glorified in everything we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go. Ah, let's see what we got here. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sunday School. Let me hit that volume. Let me turn things off right here. Let me hit it again. Turn things off. There you go. Let's go back, I should say, right here. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which would come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. Now watch this. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So the first thing that I really want to uh, show you is because we have the different gospel writers, you need to understand that each of the writer had different audiences that they would be writing to. They don't have different accounts. All of them have the same account. They all saw the same thing with the exception of one who was not an eyewitness. But they wrote about the same thing. The thing is, their audience were different. And so they had to write according to the audience. The Bible says this came to pass, which also lets me know that the Incidents and situations prior to verses 17 is not in the chronological order. And so therefore, Luke, to keep people from thinking that he is writing in the chronological order, he says it came to pass, which means there was a process of time, which also means something else took place. And then, ladies and gentlemen, he also note number two, 
that this took place on a certain day, which lets us know that it was not a Sabbath day. Because had it been a Sabbath day, there would have been much talk about it, as we understand throughout the scripture that the Pharisees and the scribes uh, were always trying to find fault with Jesus because he did things on the Sabbath day. And then lastly, this took place, ladies and gentlemen, as he was teaching and or while he was teaching. Now, Luke mentions two groups of individuals here that's unique. He says, though they were present, the Pharisees were here. And this is interesting here. He says the doctors of the law, because this is a unique statement here. Normally, you would hear him say something about the scribes. Let me ask you a question. Is these the same people, the doctors of the law, are they the same ones as the scribes? They were there, the Pharisees and the doctors of the law. And what were they doing? What were their actions? They were sitting by and they came out of every town of, let me see, look at the location that they came from, Galilee, from Judea, and from Jerusalem. So they come from all of that area, from all over. But well, here's what got me, ladies and gentlemen. The power of the Lord was not just there. He was not just present, but he was present to heal. Now, my question is, why didn't they get healed? Now, when it says that them, I don't think it was just specifically to these doctors of law and or these Pharisees. So let's get in. So his popularity, Jesus's popularity had already began to spread abroad. He had to get into a ship and set sail because according to Matthew, the eighth chapter, Jesus was on that side. And then he left to go on another side of the sea. He was there for a few minutes and there he noticed two men. One writer says one because he was specifically writing and talking about that one who he had many devils in him. Not only that, but he was living among the tombs and the graves and he would be cutting himself and crying and screaming. And he was naked. The Bible spoke about. It was that one when he saw Jesus, the Bible said that when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran up unto him and Jesus healed that man to get straight to it. He healed them and the demons or devils that was in him went into the flock at the permission of Jesus of swine. When that happens, the swine, they died, they drowned. And the people of that country asked Jesus, they didn't thank him. They didn't wish him good luck or nothing. They told him, we need you to leave. And the Bible says, according to Mark 2 and 1, that Jesus got back in the ship and he went back over to Capernaum. Not only that, he goes into the house, according to Mark 2 and 1, and the Bible said that the fame of him went throughout that he was in this house. When they heard that he was there, immediately they began to gather together, Mark 2 and 2. There were so many people in the house that there was not enough room to receive anybody, not even at the door, Mark 2 and 2. And so Jesus had entered in the ship. He came back over and then his, his now uh, I need you to understand that his ministry was still fresh because at this time he hadn't even gotten Matthew to be one of his disciples. You'll find that in Luke 5 and 27 right after this lesson. When he enters into this house, the people finds out that he's there. They come for two reasons. Reason number one, they come to hear his teaching. And reason number two, they come to be healed of him. And the Bible says that while he's there and while he's teaching, there were three groups of individuals or two groups, shall I say, the Pharisees, which were a Jewish sect. And they were the ones who were distinguished for their ceremony at observations or observances of the Mosaic law. They were supposed to have been interpreters of the Mosaic law, but they only adhered to the letter and not to the spirit. Then there were the doctors of the law. These were teachers. They were interpreters of the law among the Jews. And the Bible said that Jesus was teaching. 
which means to hold a discourse with others in order to instruct them, in order to impart instructions. And lastly, the Bible said that the, the power, the power, the strength and the ability of the Lord was there to heal. Another word for heal would be cure or to make whole. Now, what's interesting, just a few days ago, according to Isaiah 6 and 1 or 61, Jesus had read and said that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he hath anointed me to preach, to heal, to set free and all of that. He read that in chapter four, verses 16 through 21. And here is a perfect example after they put Jesus out. Let's look at the next verse and let's see what other goodies we can pull out. And behold, while he was teaching and while these Pharisees and doctors of the law were sitting by, the Bible says, and behold, men brought in a bed, in a bed, men brought in a bed, a man, which was taken with a palsy and they sought means to bring him. Watch what they're trying to do. They sought means. Mm hmm to bring him in and to lay him before him. While he was teaching, there were some men. Now, while Jesus is teaching in this packed house, there's an interruption about to take place. There's a man who's paralyzed and he's paralyzed in such that he's not able to walk. And so four men are gonna show you shortly decide that they need to bring this man and place him in the very presence of Jesus. They were not coming for their own healing. That's what I love about this. They were not coming for their own healing. They were not coming for any other reason or purpose other than for the healing of their friend. They demonstrate the love that believers should have one to another. Because I'm going to be honest with you. We are so engulfed with our problems, our situations, our downfalls, our oppositions, our opposers, until we walk past people that are in need of our help as well. These brethren, the Bible doesn't say if they were sick or well. It does mention that they brought this man, carried him in a couch in or a bed and or a pallet or a sheet or whatever it is they were carrying him in they brought him to Jesus the Bible said they brought they brought which means to bear to carry they carried this man he was he had been afflicted with palsy palsy means a suffering from a relaxing of the nerves it is a weakness of the limbs or feebleness of the knees this man could not walk to jesus so he had to get four men to carry him to jesus i spoke about this many years ago and my question was are you a stretcher bearer or are you a paul bearer in other words are you carrying people to christ it's gonna take four people to strategically carry this man because we don't know how much pain he could have been because if you're walking out of sync, it's a very uncomfortable ride. So we got to all move together. Huh, huh, huh. And so that man can have a smooth action. But if you're real tall, you short, and we're walking, it might constitute a problem. So my question is, are you a stretcher bearer? Do you take people to the hospital? Do you take people to the Lord Jesus? Or are you a Paul bearer? Do they die on you and in your hand? Ouch! I need somebody to type, I'm a stretcher bearer. So the Bible said that they sought, sought to seek after, to seek for, to aim at, or even to strive at. They sought means to do two things, to bring him in and to lay him before him. To lay, to literally sit in the place, the presence, and the lap of Jesus. That was their determination. If you're trying to download notes for this, take your phone, put it on camera, not movie, camera, point it at that QR code right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you'll see a yellow thing to show up. 
touch that it'll take you right to the notes and then just type in the name of the lesson so they have to figure out what verse am i in yeah let me go to verses number 18 okay verses number 19. so they want to lay him in the very presence i can almost say in the lap so they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find what way, y'all see that? So they sought means. They were looking for a way to bring him to Jesus, to lay him and bring him in his, poor, his place, his presence. They could not find by what way they might bring him in. Remember, two things. Shall I go back? Yeah, two things. They wanted to, let me show it right here. They wanted to bring him in, and they wanted to lay him before Jesus. Bring him in, lay him before Jesus. When they could not find what way they might bring him in. Because of the press, because of the multitude, this is what they did. They went upon, they went up, ladies and gentlemen, upon the housetop and let him down. Remember, their purpose was to lay him before Jesus and nothing was going to defeat their purpose. They went on the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the very presence of Jesus. Oh my, nothing was going to stop them. They have to figure out a plan. How are we going to get this man into the presence of Jesus when the Bible said that there was no room, according to Mark 2 and 2, not even to receive them at the door. There wasn't even standing room only, or there was standing room only. It was packed, wall to wall and treetop tall. Breaker one nine is what we used to say in the CB. My handle was double clutch Jones. Come on, somebody. I used to drive the tractor trailer. And they went up on the rooftop and the Bible said that they broke up tiles and they uncovered the tiling of the roof to let him down because there was no place for him to get into. The people came from all over to hear his teaching and to be healed, Luke 5 and 15. So these men going to make sure that their friend would be healed. They could not find, or they, uh, and when they could not find, by what way they might bring him in, when they could not find, which really means to devise as feasible. They were trying to see what was feasible to get this man into Jesus. We don't know if there were windows, probably so, but if there was no room at the door, ladies and gentlemen, there's no room in the window, but there's always room. Uh, oh, I love it. Somebody holler, somebody write, they had to go up to get to Jesus. Come on, they had to go up to go down. They had to go up to Jesus to drop him down to Jesus. They couldn't get in because of the multitude, because of the crowd. Remember, this multitude and this crowd been following Jesus ever since they heard about him. And uh, prior to this, Jesus was healing. He had healed so many groups of individuals. He cleansed the man of leper. He had healed uh, other people. He had even healed Peter's mother-in-law. That's funny because many of a, the Catholic church says that he was the first pope, but they don't believe in marriage. But how is it that Peter had a mother-in-law? There's only one way to get a mother-in-law. <laughs> Lord help me, leave me alone, y'all. Fly. <laughs> and when he, being Jesus, saw, ladies and gentlemen, what did he see? He saw their faith. He, being Jesus, said. When he saw, he said, unto the man. He said, your sins are forgiven thee. Now, 
we jump from the scribes and the Pharisees uh, to this group here called, no, we will go from the Pharisees and the doctors of the law that were simple. Here, here's my question. Are these scribes the same ones that are called the doctors of the law? I'll move on. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they begin to reason. Now watch that word right here. Saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sin but God only? Now let's look at what they said. Who is this? So Jesus saw the faith of the four men. We know without a shadow of a doubt that he saw their faith. Because the man in the couch bed was not moving. We don't see him moving. We see him lying down. However, he also appears to have faith in them. Because we don't know whose idea it was to bring him to Jesus. It could have been his. But when we look at the action, the action is really showing the men that's moving. So the focus at this point is the faith of the four men that was carrying him. He saw their faith. He says to the men, the man, he says, man, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus forgave. Now he saw their faith. That word faith means confidence. So they took him the high route. And they went on top of the roof according to Mark 2 and 4. They placed the paralyzed man in the presence of Jesus himself, Luke 5 and 19. I need somebody to understand and know that faith must be present for healing to take place. Part number one, you can have faith for your loved one, Mark 5, 22 through 43. Jairus had faith for the healing of his daughter. Number two, we can have faith for healing ourselves. That's Mark 5 and 28. The woman with the issue of blood had faith for herself. Another man had faith for his servant to be healed. What am I saying? If I'm praying for you to be healed, you can have faith or I can have faith. One of us has to have faith. You need to hear me. Because there was another person, Tabitha, uh, no, I forgot her name. Uh, she was dead. She had no faith. But the people had faith for her to be risen from the dead by Peter and by Jesus also. So the scribes, who were ones that are skilled in the Jewish law, who were also the interpreters of the law, and these Pharisees, the Bible said that they reasoned which means to resolve in one's mind and also to deliberate. Now watch this. Interesting to see them. They're here, but they're going to witness Jesus because they're going to be the ones to pursue Jesus to discredit him and to defame him. They can't deny the miracle that has taken place in this person's life. They're there sitting by. Oh, you got here at the right time because Jesus is getting ready to show you as I take that password off what he is capable of doing. Now watch this. They didn't open up their mouth to say anything. The Bible said in Mark 2 and 8 that Jesus uh, perceived that they had reasoned in their hearts their mouth never said nothing. Did you see what he said? He said, the scribes and Pharisees began to reason. They began to reason saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can for forgive sins but God? Blasphemy is to uh, speak reproachfully. Because when Jesus said that he forgive, then that made him equivalent to God, according to the Jews. And they thought that Jesus had committed blasphemy against God. 
not recognizing that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God in the flesh. Who can forgive sins but God only? Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's see. Verse 22 and 23, he says, But when Jesus, watch this, perceived, what did he perceive? Their thoughts. Because they said nothing. <laughs> I love it, ladies and gentlemen. They didn't open up their mouth, but Jesus knew what was in their heart. He answering said unto these two groups, what reason you wear in your heart? <laughs> Whether well, it's easy to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise and walk. The question Jesus asked them is why are you reasoning in your heart? They didn't know. The Bible says in John or Matthew 9 and 14, Jesus knowing their thoughts, he spoke out loud. Jesus said, wherefore do you think evil in your hearts? Matthew 9 and 4, because they were thinking that Jesus was blasphemy, feeming. That's an evil thought. He understood their hearts. The Bible said he perceived, which means to come or become thoroughly acquainted with, to know thoroughly or to know accurately. Jesus knew accurately and he knew thoroughly what they were thinking. He knew their thoughts, the thinking of a man deliberating within himself. <laughs> he knew their inward reasoning. Come on now. God said, I try the heart. That's Jeremiah 17 and 10. And then he answering, which means to give an answer to a question proposed. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus gave a question, an answer to a question that was not openly put on the floor because this answer popped up in their mind. But Jesus popped it out of his mouth to answer their evil thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. Come on, somebody write that. Jesus knows what you are thinking. He knows what you are thinking. Let's continue to move. Let's see what we got in the verses number 24. Uh, he says, but that you may know, that you may have a knowledge of an experience, that you may have a thorough knowledge that, that, now the word that is uniquely placed here twice here, that and that. Uh, the son of man, the son of man, interesting. He calls himself the son of man. That the son of man hath that word power here really means rights. He's got the authority upon earth to forgive. That word forgive means to release and to dismiss, to divorce sin. Now he, Jesus, speaks unto the man that was sick of the palsy. And look at what he said. I say unto you, arise, take up your couch. And go into your house. That is a command. He ain't asking him. He commanded. Now that man's body is subject to the son of man, the son of God on earth. That man's body has to move. That man's sickness has to be healed. Because when Christ speaks, everything moves. He created everything. The earth is his, the land, the people thereof. He founded this world. God spoke it and Jesus performed it. Come on, somebody. When Christ speaks something in our life, he walked to a dead man's grave who had been dead and stinking about four days. He called them by his name and said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said he came out of there. Then Jesus said, loose the man and let him go. So prior to the healing of this man, Jesus had healed at least four groups. There it is. At least four groups of people. He healed or and he willed the cleansing of the man with leprosy. That will be Luke 5 and 3. He healed the servant of the centurion by speaking it. Didn't even have to touch him. Luke 5 and 13. He healed Peter's mother-in-law. Luke 5 and 15. Then they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils in verses 16. And he healed all that was sick and he healed the spirits and cast them out with his word. That's Luke 5 and 16. 
He did this to fulfill scripture that is said himself took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. That's Luke 5 and 17. I keep tell, trying to tell the people of God that sickness is not of God. Sickness is not God's will. Sickness is the will of God to be healed. Why you think he healed everybody? There was not one person that he did not heal that was brought to him. He says, uh, 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 what he said to him, son, be of good cheer in Matthew 9 and 2. And the Pharisees and the scribes, they were not happy with what Jesus said. And they challenged Jesus in their heart according to his actions. But Jesus healed the man anyhow. And he says, so that. So that, that first word, that means so that, right here. This is happening so that, or in order that you may know that, that, or how that. In order that you may know, that word know here means to perceive with the eyes, to get a knowledge of and to understand. I'm going to let you see with your eyes so you can fully understand that I, the son of man. Notice he calls himself the son of man which was a term used for the Old Testament prophets. Son of man, can these bones live? Son of man, write this down. Son of man, that was a term. And Jesus is the son of man. Not only is he the son of man, ladies and gentlemen, but he is not just called the son of God, he's called the son of man because he is the kinsman redeemer. He took on the nature of man so that he can redeem man. Old Testament law is called kinsman redeemer. If I could not afford to redeem my land, my property or whatever, my next kin would redeem it for me. And since man could not redeem himself, he was too broke in his sinful ways. The son of man, Jesus came in the flesh. He became our kinsman redeemer. He's our next of kin. Angels couldn't do it. Principalities couldn't do it. Uh, and nobody else could do it. So he says, a body has thou prepared for me and I come as is written in the book to do your will because God never did like sacrifices. So Jesus came. He says that you may know that I have the authority and I have the right on earth to forgive sin. The Bible says, he says unto him, take up your bed and walk. Let me go back to that verse here. He says, but you may know that the son of man hath power. The word power means rights and authority upon the earth to forgive. He says unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up thy couch, go home. And immediately, right away, straightway, or at once, he arose. He rose up right in the presence of them all. First thing he did was rise up. Second thing he did was he took up his bed that he laid on. And third thing he did, he departed. The fourth thing he did, he went home. The fifth thing he did, he went home, departed, rising up. He was glorifying God. <laughs> he did it in their presence. Yes, Jesus healed this man. Something happened that they had never seen before. He spoke healing to this man. The Bible says, and lastly, and they were all amazed. They were thrown into amazement. That's a unique word. And they glorified God. So the man glorified God and they glorified God. Not only did they glorify God, but they were filled with fear. And they began to say, we've seen strange things today. We've never seen it done on this order. That word amaze is a funny word because that's where we get our English word ecstasy from. Amaze is a throwing of the mind out of its normal state. <laughs> Their minds were thrown off the rockers. Their minds were thrown off of the norm. And this is where we get the English word ecstasy because the Greek word is ecstasis. Even Paul said that he had been caught up. Because of this, they were thrown into ecstasy. Then they said, we have seen strange, which means unexpected, uncommon, incredible, and wonderful things to take place. 
Ladies and gentlemen, my four fifth year anniversary is in two weeks, April 14th, four o'clock at the church where I pastor. I'm inviting everybody. I want y'all to come from the North, South, East and West. If the Rodney Jones Sunday School have been a blessing to you, please take that time. Support the ministry and swing on by. Holler at your boy and let's have a good time. And y'all know I like taking my selfies. And lastly, um, I will be in uh, Houston, Texas, April 19th and 20th. The 20th, I will be at the Meadowbrook Baptist Church. There it is. That's all of your information. You can text Sunday School so that add to that letter, that um, ooh, phone number down there. I want to see some people in Houston because I want to go out, eat, and have fun, and let's have a Q&A session. Find me a hotel, not a hotel, or I have a hotel. We could go in uh, the lobby, and we can just sit and chat and just have a good time, talk about teaching, studying, or whatever. All right? There it is. If you want to support the Rodney Jones Sunday School, if you want to sow in the good ground, keep in mind that as you sow into me, I sow back into the kingdom. I help people as much as I can. You help me to be able to reach hundreds upon thousands of people daily. I get the emails daily. I get the text messages and the phone calls uh, thanking me for whatever I do. And it's because of God and it's because of your financial support that I'm able to do it. Take that moment if this lesson has been a blessing to you. Also, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you leave comments in the comment section below. And then also make sure that you share this lesson. Take time. Hit that thumbs up. I need everybody to smash the thumbs up button. And the Lord said the same. If the creek don't rise, if the Lord delay is coming and providing that I don't oversleep, I'll see you all this coming Sunday at 8 o'clock for our live Sunday school session. Remember my motto, teaching the word of God in the spirit of excellence. Peace. Please subscribe to my granddad's channel. Thank you.